Welcome back everyone. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the Imperium's uh, 10 worst jobs. Another suggestion from the community. Start it up here. Luton. In the grim darkness of the far future, there is a only war. War never changes. That's hard to read. Okay. Uh, when people forget their duty, they are no longer human. They become something less than beasts. They have no place in the boss. The bosom of humanity? Ba bosom? <laughs> duty. <laughs> when we look at the lives of those serving the Imperium, we must also understand that it is assumed that all of their service is at the behest and honor of serving the Emperor of Man and the Imperium itself. Now, while the official line from the Administratum would be that to give yourself in whatever means are required for the betterment of the Imperium is a noble cause, just and above all else a required task, it's worth remembering that these people are still humans serving in the Imperium, not superhuman Astartes or fanatical religious zealots, not cultish machine worshippers or drug crazed hive gang members, just your average person trying to stay alive and do the best that they can. Now while undoubtedly citizens of the Imperium know that they give to a greater cause and are indoctrinated from birth into the Imperial truth, at the same time you can't escape the harsh realities of some of the worst jobs imaginable for those poor saps who end up designated with such a plight in the grim darkness of the 41st millennium. Also, I think a short disclaimer is in order. By our standards, most jobs- That definitely looked like slaves. Is slavery a thing? During this time, in this in this setting, in the Imperium, are often not really what you would quantify as jobs. You might simply be compelled by your seniors toward a role that then becomes your lot in life. There's really no true unified or standardized currency system within the Imperium itself either. To do oh, okay, so there's no money. So then everyone's basically slaves, from what it sounds like, or they're just working out of fear, basically. So would be challenging, if not impossible, given the distant scale and general instability of the Imperium as a whole. Or maybe just working for food, like, directly. While Hive cities, for example, may use credits within them, or other planets operate on a more basic bartering system, some even using coinage, there's also the Throne Gelt, which is likely as close to being a universal payment as exists, and this is often used by, say, rogue traders and inquisitors who are traveling between systems. Maybe I misunderstood that, but did he not just say there is no universal currency and then now there is? Overall, though, there's no unified economic system. It's all based on tithes and requirements for the Imperium's needs. It's all oh, maybe he said there's no unified system, not the currency. My bad. It's all fairly inconsistent. While some jobs are paid and unpaid, it's often unlikely that you're going to have a literal choice in what your assigned lot in life is. People aren't going to be going out to school and then choosing a vocation, although obviously for some jobs, some roles, some level of moderate education is required so that you can best interact with the materials and data slates that you're having to handle. But you as an individual are an unimportant speck in the grand scheme of the Imperium, and you will do what is required of you, because that is your reality. Moreover, most of the Imperium trades in commodities. This can be raw materials, military hardware, and very often humans. So more than likely you are an asset and will be utilized however the Imperium sees it. The best way to visualize currency in the Imperium is that it's all system specific for the most part. And within a hive for one, you are likely never going to leave and so its credit system would be very specific to that location. There's no need for it to exist outside of that. Think of it like company money. You get paid by the person you're working for who then also happens to simultaneously produce all of your other requirements. So you then are being paid by and paying back into that same company. It's a good way to basically regulate what the citizenry are using and ensure that everybody gets their fair or perhaps basic requirement share of things. I could be wrong, but isn't this like uh, something like socialism or... I don't know the actual term. Basically, like everyone gets... Like, no matter how hard you work, you just get the same stuff as everyone. 
Now you think you've got a worse like the opposite of capitalism, whatever that I'll is. I'll throw it down in the comments and maybe I'll include it in part two of this if I do a follow up. And if you guys enjoy this and we open it up to even some more loose speculation for different parameters and different aspects of Warhammer 40,000, this could become an ongoing accompanying series. So now in no actual order of horror, to begin with, servitors. Now for reasons we won't get into here, within the Imperium, any advanced state of artificial intelligence is aggressively outlawed. So instead, the ever ingenious humanity of the future has found a fantastic solution to get around this problem. Because we are, after all, always such great problem solvers. The solution? Well, as is always the case, there is a plentiful supply of human plebs, criminals, and general undesirables. So how about we part lobotomize them, hopefully they get the gift of being mind wiped, and then fuse what's left of their still living but now eviscerated carcasses into a somewhat functional cyborg. It's not really AI, and it's not really human. Problem solved, everybody's happy. Lobotomize slaves to do whatever the needs to be done, that's really fucked up. <laughs> except likely the unwilling participants of becoming a servitor. Servitors are a vital part of the Imperium, carrying out tasks too dangerous or too enduring for humans to want to take on the role. Although if no servitor were available and push comes to shove, you know that somebody's going to have to install that hyper dangerous fuel system and it's not going to be any officer types. While servitors are questionably necessary, they are a sad and incredibly depressing portrait of the dark future. And it's very questionable given the fairly immoral state of humanity in the 41st millennium just how well lobotomized these individuals are if they're not mind wiped. Servitors, while carrying out their instructed functions if left to their own devices, have been seen to become confused and disorientated, sometimes found in a lost corner of a starship or missing in the maze of a hive city, babbling to themselves with a sea of incomprehensible speech with perhaps some scant details of their former selves and former lives, perhaps trying to formulate some cognition or sense of who they were before. Worse still, we hear stories of people who undergo surgery appearing to be under anaesthetic, but are in fact just paralyzed and fully conscious. That is terrifying. That is the most terrifying thing that can ever happen. I think ever happened to anyone. You wake up in the middle of a surgery and you can't, you can't do anything. And you could possibly also feel pain because you're awake, which is... But I have heard that um, now, that, like that's common knowledge that that can possibly happen. Um, they give people also like, or I, I don't know if you request it or what, but there's an amnesia drug that makes you forget it. So even if you do experience it, it's kind of like time travel -y weirdness. Like, I guess you would feel the pain and you would experience that. But when you wake up, you'd forget it. So it's like it didn't happen, right? I don't know, maybe somewhere deep down in your mind you'd still be messed up <laughs> from it. I don't know. So it broaches the possibility nice thought, that though, some I guess. or even many servitors are actually fully aware of the lives they're living and with full awareness and memory of even their former lives, but who then simply lack the ability to speak or even control their own bodies, trapped in a silent, monotonous and potentially unending agony in the prisons they have been physically melded into. One of probably the most common and unpleasant tasks to partake in within the Imperium would be working in its vast factories. Now planets with hive cities will usually be spattered with important resources and their factories will then churn out any number of processed materials necessary for the functioning of their hive and or required by order of the Imperium off-world. The administrators and governors were not- This is children, right? Like child labor. Not nah, cool. ...care how these orders are fulfilled, only that they are completed on time as required. This subsequently means the conditions for workers are just about as awful as you could imagine. Toxic, acrid air, long 20-hour shifts, token pay, and squalid... Oh! 20-hour shifts. Damn. God damn, that's like, what, just four hours of sleep? Not, not even. Do Jesus, because like, you gotta... Account like travel time. They must be on drugs or something to work 20 hours. Jesus Christ. Cramped living conditions. Built different. Still, for most people at this level of society, it's probably the best they could hope for. 
upward mobility is not a thing, and the only other options being to slip into vagrancy and an underhive of horrors. Even then, this is a class of citizen who no one will blink an eye if somebody goes missing for whatever horrible reason, and still grinding day after day in a factory of hot, dangerous, and likely condemning you to a slow, agonizing death as your body is ravaged by fulfilling your work quota, coupled with the slow poisoning it receives every day, is hardly an appealing alternative, but it's the best that many can hope for. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I, I, I really don't think that anything past, um, like they do 12 hour shifts places, but I feel like after maybe nine hours of work, your productivity really, really, really drops. So I feel like there's uh, some definite diminishing returns that would happen with 20 hour shifts, but what do I know? an Imperial Guardsman. Now, while a Guardsman is obviously an honorable and respected role for those in the Imperium, because frankly anybody forced to face down a 40 foot high lumbering alien killing machine who will in all likelihood either cleave you in two, strip the skin from your body, leaving you running around screaming like a skinned animal. Yeah, I wouldn't want to see this dude on the battlefield or just bludgeon you to a pulp or maybe bombard you with projectiles full of acidic, boring maggots. Is that a, is that a space spider? I don't want any, anything to do with this. Deserves a reasonable level of no, respect, thank you. even if that service was in fact non-consensual. As with many military roles in the Imperium, Guardsmen serve with a duality of horrific warfare experience coupled with unceasing immortal honor. Because of the extreme casualty rates, most Guardsmen are equipped with simply a LAS gun, because why give them more than that when they're not going to be around to use it? A LAS gun being a weapon often referred to as a flashlight because of its extremely poor effectiveness against the severe threats faced by the Imperium. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you pawns, you, you grunts, go out there and uh, light the battlefield with your, with your guns so that we can see. That's really all we, we need you for. Just, uh, just, just go do that and then we'll take out the rest and it doesn't matter if you die or not. <laughs> Other heavy weaponry for its soldiers are available as well as some devastatingly powerful tanks, ordnance, and air support, but for your average man on the ground, bad luck, you get the LAS gun. While Imperial propaganda will tell the glory of serving in the Imperium, the reality is fairly disconnected from this stirring and glorifying rhetoric. The phrase battle of attrition comes quickly to mind for many guardsmen who will not receive much if any personal body armor, unlike their superhuman Astartes saviors, Nope, you're going into battle with the shirt on your back, and as an individual, no one is going to be stopping to help you when you lose a limb, or worse. And the word expendable will be very much on your commander's lips. Now yeah, that's fair. I, I don't think I've uh, come across anything saying that there's medics at all. That's an interesting point to... to to bring up. I don't think there's a medic at all. If it isn't bad enough that you're facing a Anywhere. nightmarish host of Xenos, your commissar will be standing right behind you, ready to kill you or your newfound friends on the slightest hint of your hesitation, or perhaps Ooh, simply shit. to just motivate those around you. Unless you have qualified for a specialist division or an elite force within the guard, you're more than likely going to become Operation Human Shield. And if by some miracle you manage to survive the horrific conditions of battling alien horrors with little more than a gun that shoots light, having watched many around you die in the most unbearable of circumstances and then still have your sanity intact, not to mention hopefully not having your body be completely broken, there's nothing to say that an orbiting Astartes or Inquisition may not simply decide that things are not going quite as well as they'd expected and decide that in fact an orbital bombardment might best serve the fast resolution of the situation and your service is appreciated guardsman. If you feel like <laughs> your service is appreciated and you want to voice your concerns really. to those around you, this is not advisable. Commissars will be standing by to silence you for potentially damaging unit morale. But like so many aspects of the Imperium, the most hollow element is the fact that in serving your family, your planet, and your Imperium, you will not be remembered and will be 100% left behind if the situation warrants it. You will not be receiving a flashy service or your family informed of your demise. You are but one of millions upon millions of soldiers. And while some planets are focused around specialist skills and military training, many more are unwitting or even unwillingly drafted. You will not receive special genetic engineering. You get your gun, your orders, and a direction to advance. Now get on with it, guardsmen, before your own officer shoots you for failure to follow command. Your bloodline is weak and will die out.
So long, guardsmen. <laughs> Next in direct contrast is the dull monotony of bureaucracy. You are the hey. grease and oil in the machine as an administrative scribe. While many lives in the Imperium are pain-ridden and lives of frustrating physical agony, there is an argument to be made that endless perpetual administration is equally unbearable. The role of an administrator or an administrative scribe is to perpetually carry out tasks that must seem simply entirely pointless in the grand scheme of things. Your daily tasks lost amid a vast ocean of information. Your whole being lost in reams and reams of paper trails, and even the purpose and intent of your tasks are potentially lost to meaning, or possibly even no longer required, having been long forgotten about. Billions of clerks, scribes, and general admin staff work tirelessly to manage the Imperium at every tier. Compared to others, this may seem like a sweet job to land yourself, but imagine having to do the same thing every day, without end, without opportunity, and without meaning. This it reminds me that apparently there's a bunch of jobs, at least I know in America, that people literally go to work, but they don't do anything. Or like they're given tasks that just don't matter at all and they're just paid and like overlooked pretty much. It's really interesting. In many respects, it's the closest thing to hell for many. Pointless tasks with no thanks or appreciation, no sense of really contributing anything to the greater whole, cold, harsh working conditions still subject to the same brutal rules and regulations that dictate all imperial life, indeed the very nature of the complex bureaucracy that is strictly enforced and allows little room for error. Regulations, forms, protocols and process is your life. Worse, perhaps, is to live a life of blind ignorance of the goings-on beyond the walls and confines of your endless daily data processing. Many administrative positions are considered hereditary as well, so you'll be committed to a life of permanent placement facing logic engines and cogitator workstations. For an administratum scribe working in their specific sub-departments, all must be recorded, catalogued, completed in quadruplet, processed, and then as long as centuries later, finally archived. The whole process is grindingly slow and dull beyond the strongest possible interpretation of the word. And as a final insult, you must fulfill your role accurately and efficiently for the entirety of your servitude. Failure to do so risks intervention by the Inquisition, administrative departments who have failed to maintain an acceptable level of efficiency, or worse, make a catalogue of errors, may be subject to mass summary executions by Inquisitors for crimes against the Imperium. As a yeah, so work do this meaningless, meaningless work or you die a simple cog in a machine you could also unknowingly participate in a scheme of upward conspiracy and corruption and be judged for this without even having been aware of doing so a thankless soul destroying job where you'll likely never see anything beyond the incarcerated walls of your administrative vault sector now the human batteries otherwise known as psychers used to fuel the emperor atop of his golden throne Unsanctioned psychers are continually hunted by the Imperium, and when discovered they will likely be transported off-world to return to Terra in what are referred to as the much-feared Black Ships. As an unsanctioned psyker, you'll be assigned to one of two roles for the Imperium. Training to a full operating psyker or a psychic human battery to fuel the Emperor and the Astronomicans' daily required injection of psychic power. Unsanctioned psychers represent a great threat to populations as they run the risk of unwittingly becoming a portal for demonic incursion. And those imprisoned within its cavernous, permanently dark, freezing cold holds on the journey back to Terra, with thousands of other unfortunate members being probably the most harrowing part of the ordeal, as these untrained psychers will expel their panicked and fraught emotions all around them. As such, only the most mentally strong Sisters of Silence will crew these vessels so as to be able to withstand the constantly soul-numbing despair of the incarcerated amateur psychers. For the majority of these poor souls upon reaching Terra itself, their fate will be psychic disintegration as they are consumed by the Emperor and the Astronomicon, their very mind, soul and body being consumed in agonizing psychic fire and their bodies and brains are burned to ashes. But it Oh, this sounds awful. <laughs> literally, literally, I, I guess like you're getting your brain just like disintegrated and sucked out. Ugh. Does keep the Imperium's lighthouse lit for another day at least. An unpleasant but perhaps at least highly appreciated task to carry out in your service for the Imperium is that of refueling a starship warp drive. 
Now, this has scant documentation on who specifically carries out this role, but it is described as being similar to a funeral procession. Those chosen to carry out the task will begin by leaving an airlock to cross the service deck of a ship wearing robes of grey metallic thread connected up with valves of long cabling, all wearing thick lead gloves as they carry their heavy metal caskets upon their shoulders. The service staff's eyes, nose and mouth will be similarly fitted with these connective valves, the unknown material they carry within these caskets evidently being extremely hazardous, for as these individuals cross to their objective, their flesh, skin will slowly cook and be burned away. This process being described by tech priests as the most perilous operation a vessel could undertake, barring actual combat. As the procession of staff would approach God, the damn. warp drive central column, the casket carriers would become even further physically damaged and even start to disintegrate, but being driven perhaps by the chemicals and gases being infused into them as pain suppressors and some chemical concoctions to enable them to carry out such a task, they lumber forward. But the closer the carriers come to the drive itself, the more they begin to stagger and the metallic robes deteriorate. Their infused chemicals keeping them barely standing as their bodies begin to quite literally fall apart. Chunks of flesh and matter falling from their person as they push on to deliver their fuel to the drive. The casket would be finally pushed into a socket of the drive column as some of the carrier's limbs would detach and strips of muscle and bone hang down from their gaping robes. Oh my god, this is so just like disturbingly detailed. This is reminding me of um there there was a there's a Chernobyl, I think it's like Chernobyl uh lost tapes and they have footage of these people um I think they're like trying to cover up the reactor with some kind of dirt or something. And they have them in these like I I think it's like lead, almost like suits of armor, and like that's going to do anything. <laughs> And they all sadly died very shortly after. Very tragic. Servitor-like machines would collect the remains of the carriers and scrape these into yet more caskets before tech priests offer prayers to the machine god. With the last great effort, the final casket bearers would load their fuel into the drive before the doors would rapidly shut. The That's something I haven't con considered either. What's the afterlife like in uh, 40k? Maybe, maybe that'll be the next video. I don't know. Robed shells would now be retracted to the entry point, and the ship's captain might be heard to utter, Emperor, preserve us, before finally turning away from the harrowing scene playing out on the engineering deck of their starship. Imagine life in something like the 13th century, essentially the Middle Ages, where anything like 90% of the population spend all of their time, every day, working the land. This is life on a feudal world. There are a few citizens with specific jobs working stone and metals, but your average person's life is doomed to endless hard labour. This physically destroying job is carried out from dawn to dusk, year round, with the populace likely surviving on a meagre supply of its own productivity. A high mortality rate of disease and infection, industrial accidents with primitive machinery or domestic complications like no medicine to prevent women from dying in childbirth, this all in and of itself sounds hard enough of a life, but imagine, if you will, the job of a feudal gong farmer. Now what is this scintillating job? Well, it's collecting the mess of medieval latrines and cesspits, bringing it mainly ah, outside gross. of a city or a town to be used as fertilizer for farming. You do get the privilege Sewage of working. searching through the waste if you choose to find any valuables, and by the way, you also have to work only during the night. And here's hoping you don't pass out from the fumes you're inhaling and potentially drown in the stuff you're having to rake out every night. And for those on a feudal world to top it off, an Imperial Administrator will be watching from an orbital platform, and that's about all the defenses your planet has. So let's hope no blood-crazed orcs, hungry tyranids, or immoral demons come wandering by. If you I mean, when you're raking shit, the only thing that can get worse is if you're getting shot at, right? a feudal planet or in a factory for material processing in a hive was bad, don't be so ungrateful, citizen. You have a privileged life compared to those poor souls working in agri-processing. While this is going to vary from hive planet to planet, some of the worst of this is processing what's referred to as corpse starch and ration biscuits, both unpleasant in their own way. As populations for the massive arcologies known as hive cities become quite simply ridiculous, housing anything between 10 and 100 billion citizens, the need for sustenance is obviously difficult to provide for. 
And while you may be lucky enough to save up your credits and purchase a delicious chunk of rat meat, you're more than likely going to be enjoying some delicious ration bars or corpse starch. But how do workers produce such luxuries? Well, ration bars are best described as horribly greasy, generally unpopular, shockingly, and are biscuit bars to feed workers, serfs, and military forces. They're manufactured by harvesting bio-rich matter from ocean planets and worlds with seas, which then provides a protein-rich gruel. This mmm, that rat meat <laughs> makes it, it makes me. I'm envisioning. I'm envisioning like a fruit cake. Or like a like a meat fruit cake. Oh. Ooh. Or like in a snow piercer, they get those like protein chunk protein block things. Woo. Nope. Miss me with that. This though would be not enough to provide for the billions of citizens, so it must be instead fed to larvae of the Erokian bio Nah, I'd take it right on a stick any day over a protein block gelatinous like bleh. Fly. Now when these larvae reach an optimal stage in their life cycle when they're plump enough, the larvae are going to be pulped by workers and compressed down into the hard to stomach biscuit ration bars. Well, the agri workers no, doing no, this no. process will work in huge- Liter Wait, wait. <laughs> they're getting the proteins from literal maggots. Oh. <laughs> air sealed pens that produce these plump fat larvae. If you're working in one of these places, then things are not going to be going well for you. And you're probably quite low down in your hive city as the stench and endless droning vibrations and material mechanical Botulism. sounds of the bioflies yes. is not one that many would choose to live with. Still though, it could be worse. You could be producing corpse starch, which is about as appealing as it sounds. This material is bland, filling, and relatively nutritious because it's basically reconstituted biomatter mixed with animals, plants, discarded organics, and of course rumored to include human corpses as well. Oh, While this great. is undoubtedly <laughs> frowned upon by various administrative departments of the Imperium, it's one of those things that a planetary governor is going to either sweep under the rug, play down, or full-on cover up. It's never out and out a disclosed ingredient, but highly suspected that one way the population are able to be adequately fed oh. is the mechanical reclamation of human biomatter, albeit then diluted by various other organic materials. It's like so many things in the Imperium on the- My cat is on my the armrest of my chair. No. Well, I guess since she's up there, we'll show her off for a second. Okay, she's not supposed to be up there. This is a very expensive chair. She's gonna rip the rip the coating. She's gonna tear the leather. Anyways, borderline of being acceptable. And when faced with limited options for feeding your population, the alternative being violent food riots, then it becomes a necessary evil. Pity though the workers who have to work in the stinking immoral environment where you must process endless stinking vats of biomatter, perhaps seeing some things that are going to be difficult to forget as you catch your eager four hours of rest before getting back into the production line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to this 20 hours of work thing. That's not four hours of rest. You gotta, like, you gotta eat before you go to bed. You gotta, like, have some sort of... To stay sane, you gotta have some sort of fun, right? So like, bruh, how would you not just end it? I would, I would, like, I'd clock out of life just completely. Now I am yet to cover the assassins of the Imperium, but one aspect in being selected to work as an Imperial assassin is their pre pre training. Now, as with most Imperial roles. It's quite unpleasant. But specifically, the role of the Eversa Temple, which disturbingly leans towards using the youngest recruits as they are less developed and therefore easier to bioadapt later in surgery. To start off with, most recruits will be orphans from a death world, of which there are quite unsurprisingly a plentiful supply in the Imperium. These recruits after some base training will be transported to Terra, but en route they will continue to be trained by a survival of the fittest assessment. These very young recruits will engage in what can best be described as an ongoing battle royale of wills, initiative and resolve. Recruits are required to survive on minimal food, even minimal oxygen, for days on end, as well as continual forced fighting between themselves. 
This could be armed, unarmed, in near total darkness, or distracting aural and lighting conditions. Heat, cold, varying levels of gravity from the thin to the severe all will be factors in their assessment. When they eventually reach terror, there could be anything below one-tenth of the original number of recruits who have survived this harrowing ordeal. Or perhaps none at all if their assessors deem them unsatisfactory to requirements. The recruits, though, will then be organised by the temple they are best suited for. Ever so assassin recruits face, though, the further horror of being now forcibly bioengineered. These youngest recruits who are essentially children will be turned through this process into unstoppable drug fueled killing machines. Jesus Christ. Is the I mean, hey, I'm a conspiracy theorist. I like interesting stuff like this. Um, I wouldn't put it past, like, what is it? The sparrows or whatever in Russia? Like, they kidnap young girls and turn them into, like, su seductive spies and hop them up on drugs and make them uh unable to have children i mean that could definitely be true i wouldn't be surprised if it was but uh i don't have i don't know i don't have any ev evidence but i feel like we're not that far away from doing something like this Adapts will use a range of genetic adaptation, endoskeletal restructuring, bionic implants, and infusions of chemicals to turn the previously human youth into a nightmarish weapon that can barely be controlled by its own leaders. Their cerebral cortex will also be enhanced <laughs> and the brain fitted with Lobo spies. chips. These will amplify <laughs> no, the assassin's state of mind to either raging bad, hate, bad. pure determination, or extreme fanatical drive for the love of the Imperium at any cost. This whole process is unpleasant and far from risk-free. Many subjects will die of massive multi-organ collapse as their bodies struggle to handle the severe restructuring. And this is not to mention the inevitable side effects from being turned into a bio-enhanced, drug-fueled, borderline if not psychotic killing machine. Yeah, Past this point, the assassin terrifying. will continue the attempt to balance the complex cocktail chemicals that's fueling and simultaneously poisoning their system. Finally, at the end of all this, the assassin will be placed in cryo-suspension their bodies so drug fueled and their own mindset so completely unstable that it's easier than keeping them actively conscious. Before a mission, they're going to be placed into a drop pod and then fired down to achieve their task. Becoming an Eversor assassin is likely one of the worst jobs in the Imperium, as your life is nothing but soul destroying pain and servitude to be stripped of everything you were and used as an indiscriminate weapon of the Imperium. Wait, so they're. <laughs> they're created frozen and then just like. Like like pop, <laughs> like murderous popsicles. Whenever they're needed, they're just like thought out and deployed. That's wild. What the fuck? Imperium. Now penal legions are the dregs of imperial society, so you can imagine these are some less than capable individuals. These are usually members of the Imperial Guard and PDF who have perhaps not been executed on the spot for their crimes and instead commuted to a life sentence in the loosest definition of the word. However, a penal legion can be easily made up of murderers, maniacs, thieves, in general criminal elements of society, or just those who were far too incompetent in their duties and have been sentenced to play some more mildly useful role for the Imperium. These legions, though, unfortunately, are basically the waste dump of human society and are forced to wear explosive slave collars that are more about turning the troops into human bombs than a disciplinary incentive. They march in a shambolic way towards their goal, or perhaps run if they're crazed, and then perhaps to just encourage those around them with whatever they're meant to be doing, maybe a few of them will be blown up and detonated here and there. But is this the job we're talking about? Well, no. <laughs> The explosions will continue until morale improves, <laughs> basically, Jesus Christ. In fact, what we're actually sparing a thought toward are those tasked with maintaining control over these plebs. Penal Legion overseers essentially have the unfortunate task of herding a bunch of shambolic, potentially murderous and psychopathic cats. Some of the Penal Legion will relish their role and accept their death, running headlong into the enemy, but others may fall into mental ruin, just falling to the floor, crying, unable to move. Others may try to run away or simply just lash out and kill those standing around them. As frustratingly soul-destroying as such a task is, those commanding a Penal Legion are usually well-versed in dealing out punishment, cruelty and incentives to their force and will lay down brutal levels of discipline. Despite this professionalism though, it's still likely one of the most frustrating roles to 
have to command in with a force who are potentially just as happy killing each other and themselves as they are the enemy. So now to finish, I'm going to have to break your immersion. But the truest worst job that could exist in 40k is, well, whatever you can draw from your own imagination. Because this might seem like a cop out, but it's actually the real bedrock of 40k. Because while it has embedded canon and non-canon lore, it's also a world whereby you as a participant are encouraged to use your own imagination. The civilian life of the dark future is very poorly documented and really we only have scraps of information compared to the endless raging war fest that is ongoing between various factions. The civ yeah. Leave it in the comments guys. What a <laughs> What's the what's the worst job that you can think of? This is a video game. Uh it's a tabletop game, Z. Uh, War Warhammer 40K. The civilian life of the Imperium is perhaps one of the most interesting aspects that exists in the 40k universe, and if Games Workshop will not expand upon it, maybe it's time we start doing so ourselves with some wild speculations and imaginings. The whole thing with 40k is that the Imperium itself is so fractured and spread across countless systems with vast distances in between, it's really hard to focus in on some of the details of different worlds. Now this has happened very, very slowly over time with little fragments of information but some could be, for example, nightmarish gulags, while others could be verdant, lush garden worlds of pleasure. Others could be more Earth-like, with all the complex goings-on of human life that this entails, or you could be living in a horrific hive city or toxic choking forge world. Or how about a planet that's being cut off from the Imperium due to a simple administrative... Yeah, the armor is what brought me, or like, originally got me into Warhammer, but now, like, watching these lore videos, it's just like, it's so deep. And so there's just so much to it and it's so interesting. And as you kind of pointed out, like, is this a, is this a theory of like what our future could be? And it's not far off, honestly, like I could just sadly, just about like all these crazy jobs. We're not like, we're like one moral wall away from doing this kind of stuff. Negative error forced to go its own way with the vague hope of one day being rediscovered if it's not destroyed by yeah, some miss other me with the maggot pies, in please. the whilst. And this for me is one of the most enjoyable parts of Warhammer 40,000. You can use your own imagination to build a whole narrative given the existing lore and framework of the factions within it. Often the world of 40k draws on real world history and it's something that I really love the idea of doing in creating whole descriptions of planets and locations that are non-canon and entirely fictional. Perhaps this is something I'll find time to do, perhaps it's something you guys would be interested in me doing. In the meanwhile, worst jobs canon or not, tell me down below what's the worst thing you can come up with. I'm probably going yeah, to let me know what's, what's the worst As always, guys, job you can think up, guys. Thank you for your support. I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, just as he said. I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you all.